Oh, I didn't see you there. Um, yeah, this episode's a bit messed up. So uh, it's probably going to be two parts because it's really long. And I ran into lots of issues. I don't know. Oh, but if you could like the video and subscribe, that would also be really awesome. And then I might be able to afford some proper tools. How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Average Garage. Today we've got the old man in the shed again. Say hello dad. Hello dad. <laughs> Alright, so at the moment we're currently pulling the engine out the beetle for the second time because I've got an oil leak which is up in there somewhere I think where the doghouse cooler is. So we're going to drop the engine out because it's just the easiest way to get anything done on this thing. So we're going to drop it out, um, yeah, pull all the tinware off again and see what the go is. Once we've done that, chucked it back in, then I can start on the brakes and see what the rear brakes are doing, and then we'll go from there. So let's jump into it. Uh, we've already done all the leg work, so now we're just gonna drop the engine down and dive into it. Right, so I don't know where we got up to, I've got to check the footage yet, but camera died yesterday while we were doing a bunch of work and it turns out we actually had to pull the head off again because we pulled all the tinware off and I thought the oil leak was in the doghouse cooler, I'm pretty sure that's what they're called, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but it seems it wasn't the cooler, so yeah, we had to pull the head off and I'm pretty sure it was that same jug that I replaced, uh, or the jug and piston assembly, I'm pretty sure it was that same one I replaced 
when I did the little rebuild on this thing so it mustn't have sealed properly either way we pulled it off pulled the shim that's on it off and put a heap of aviation gasket sealer on it chucked it all back on so hopefully this time it's sealed all the heads talked up and all that again um, we stretched the push rod tubes just a little bit just to help them seat again um, yeah threw it all back together and now we have the engine as it sits uh, we also did do the doghouse cooler i don't know if i just mentioned that and put new seals in that anyways because i had them here so it would be stupid not to so pulled that off sealed that again so yeah now the engine's ready to go back in the car for the second time um, and then yeah we've also got some other work to do and then yeah we can get on to ripping these brake drums off and seeing what's going on quick little update the engine seals are back in the air seals new one is at the back because i didn't have that one to begin with the rest are in i'm not sure whether these ones are supposed to have a step in them like that um i'm just not sure because the whole ass end of this car is tweaked so yeah not 100 percent sure most of this is not sitting where it should be and it's fiberglass so not all of it it's mostly steel but there there's definitely some tomfoolery going on anyways i'm going to attempt to put this engine back in and then i've also got a carb rebuild kit so i might throw that in and then we'll get into the drums Right, so as you've just seen, we've pulled the carby apart. Now the rebuild kit is sprawled out across here. There are four different types of gasket that I found in the exact same kit. This is the closest matching to what I have. So it's got a little breather hole there. It's got the little doodle there. So I'm gonna use that one. So the other three can go over there somewhere out of the way. Now I'm not 100% sure, somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but there's two fiber washers and two aluminum washers. And if we look over the instructions here, it says, depending on what carburetor you have, you must follow the right um, washer for the float needle valve assembly. Now, I've measured all them and they are all one mil. So I don't know how you're supposed to get the half mil that they recommend or the one and a half mil, but there is not a single washer in here that is half a mil. So. I don't know what their plan is there. Anyways, luckily I've got the picked uh, thir or the 30 picked two, so it needs to be one millimeter, which all of those washers are, but I'll probably use the alloy one because that will hold um, better than the fiber, I think, as far as when I torque it down. So yeah, anyways. So for those playing at home, I just want to point out, I got this carb rebuild kit, which said it suited a 30 picked two carby from justcampers.com. Now, problem is, 
Not much of it suited my carby. It was pretty much the diaphragms and a couple of gaskets, that's it. Everything else was pretty much useless, so most of it is just sitting in a shed, rotting away, doing absolutely nothing. Right, so I'm going to start chucking all this back together. I will clean the bodies off camera and all that, but I'm going to start chucking it back together. I'm not going to put you guys through that though. So for you guys, you get a quick transition. There it is. Carby's done. It looks 10 times cleaner than it did. It's still not perfect, but it's a lot cleaner than it was. And uh, yeah, that'll do the job nicely. I've used just a little bit of aviation gasket at the top just to make sure it doesn't leak. And I'll use some uh, blue celastic on the bottom here just to make sure there's no air leaks and stuff. But yeah, it's all together. The, uh, it was a bit tedious, so I'm not going to bother putting all of the footage in. But yeah, you get the gist. It's together. All right, guys, welcome back. So you've just seen the carb rebuild. It, we did what we could. There was a few issues along the way with the kit. But either way, it's back together and it's as clean and as rebuilt as it's going to get. So... We'll deal with the blows as they happen. Anyways, I've already ripped a drum off and it was stupidly tight. Um, I had to use my big, big Scorpion Ugga Dugga, big pneumatic powered one or air powered, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, had to use that bad boy because the Ryobi just did not cut it. Uh, it was bloody tight. So apparently they're like 240 or 50 odd Newton meters. So they are bloody tight. Either way, as you can see, we've got the drum brake off. So now, what we can do is, pretty much I'm gonna take a photo of all this on my phone so I know what's going on. But we're gonna pull it all apart, figure out what's going on. Now this side, if you remember, makes beautiful noises. So, we're gonna deal with that side in a bit. But for now, I've got an axle seal kit. So I'm gonna undo these four bolts, take that off. Um, figure out what falls off. I've got new wheel cylinders and I may have new brake shoes. We'll see because a friend, Rob, who gave me the bonnet latch that's up there also gave me a set of shoes that he had laying around that didn't fit his Beetle. So we'll see if they work on mine. I've also got to connect this fuel line back up before I forget about it. That being said though, I am going to let that drain out and just drain what's left in the tank because the fuel I reckon doesn't smell too bad, but my old man reckons is absolutely cactus. So, yeah, we'll drain that out. We'll put maybe 10 litres of fresh fuel in there, and maybe I might even pull the tank and try and flush it out a bit. We'll see what happens. That's later problem. For now, let's dive into the brakes. I don't think that's supposed to happen. Oi! What? Mate, what are you doing? I was just finding a tool. Yeah, don't worry about that, man. We're cancelled. What? Yeah, those guys there, man. They, they haven't liked and subscribed. Don't know what to tell you. Oh, 